Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stefano Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And welcome again to another edition of Activists Around the World. Yeah! Woo! Yeah, okay, thank you. I feel like I should, uh-huh. we should clap, right? Um, and today, <laughs> we are talking bees, y'all. Well, not just completely mm. about bees, but bees. So, Annie, I know, I need to know, what do you know about bees? Tell me all about them. I love bees. I absolutely love bees. Obviously, you've seen my bee pillow pad. Yes, of course. Um, Ruby. Which is precious to me. But I, uh, very early in my career was Saver, uh, the other podcast I do, which was my first time hosting a podcast. We did a mini series on bees and we did a video mini series on bees. Um, and so we talked to like a mead guy and we talked to, there's a hotel in Atlanta, the Hyatt Regency that has rescue bees on the top of mm-hmm. their hotel. Um, and I just love bees. I think they're amazing. What they do is fantastic. And scientifically, like, dang, bees are cool. Bees are objectively cool, and we need the bees. (laughs) Yeah, okay. So I I knew you had some good information about bees. We all know the bees are important, and they're very Mm -hmm. necessary, and I love good honey. So, and we love it locally sourced, and apparently it could help you with allergies. Yes. And there are specific to regions. There are specific types of bees to regions. Um, And I think that's very important to say because we're going to talk about that. Because today we're talking about beekeeper, environmentalist, and environmental Mayan activist, Lady Page, uh, who is a leader, a fighter, and a fierce advocate for our community. So she was born and raised in Hopelchen in the Campeche state of Mexico. And Page uh, is continuing on her ancestral legacy of beekeeping, uh, which was something that's been a part of her Mayan culture, which goes back like thousands of years, like 3,000 years with these specific bees. But that legacy was threatened not too long ago thanks to big industry. In 2000, a company called Monsanto, which is owned by Bayer, started growing an experimental genetically modified soybean in that area. As in fact, industrial agriculture has some of the highest rates of deforestation in Mexico, taking over 94,000 acres and destroying the forest and taking over some of the Mayan lands. And not surprisingly, these crops affected the communities and land, whether it was polluting the purity of the honey that was being produced or causing issues linked to birth defects and miscarriages due to the pesticides and chemicals used to help modify the soybeans, which was engineered to be Roundup resistant. Right. And when we're talking about Roundup, we're talking about that actual... uh pesticide that is so common today that they create, they're trying to create this experimental soybean, which was causing a lot of havoc. And like a leader, Paige was not having it. Um, And specifically about the bees, she said, quote, the little bees can't defend themselves. They can't defend their rights, but we can. Mayans have worked for generations to preserve bees. We have a very important relationship with the bees. Our cultural identity is, let's say, based on the care and conservation of bees. We have real that to produce our food, we must protect the bees. We need bees to protect our medicinal plants. That's why the Mayans have a very important relationship with our bees. And I think it's very important that we understand how significant uh, species can be. And of course, there is a specific species that they they use, which is not typically common anywhere else. I didn't even try to say (laughs) the official term. You can look it up. Uh, But it was very specific to their land and uh, their community. And uh, seeing the damages that these companies were causing her community and her land, she took action. Uh, She not only started nonprofits to come together to fight, uh, such as Sin, Transhanicos, uh, which means without GMOs, or, and I'm sorry if I'm saying this wrong, Much Kambal or Campbell uh, Coalition and the collective Apicola de los Chains. But she also was able to get help uh, from academic institutes to document the impacts of the GM or the genetically modified soybean uh, to the honey and the environment and to the community. And she was able to get the evidence to show the harm it was causing not only in their production of honey, but to the water and the livelihoods of the people. 
She and the organizations filed a lawsuit against Monsanto and the government to stop this damaging practice. Of course, it wasn't just that simple. Pache and the coalition started educational and awareness programs around the communities, created workshops for others to exchange information and brainstorm in the specific activism, and they launched petitions and protests with around 2,000 participants And in 2015, the Mexican Supreme Court ruled in favor of the indigenous communities stating that the government must consult the communities before the GM soybeans can be planted, uh, which quickly revoked the Monsanto permits and planting. And later in 2017, Mexico's Food and Agricultural Services revoked the permit altogether, which was the first time the government took official action in protecting the environment and indigenous indigenous community from GM crops. Right. And Paige and her crew have been a huge example for others seeking to protect their lands. Similarly, um, in one report, after the company Monsanto lost their case, one of the representatives commented that they could not believe that such a small woman, referring to Paige, uh, was able to beat them. So it was quite obviously they were like, what? Paige has continued to advocate for our community and for other indigenous communities around her. Uh, she is a member of an all Mayan women's cooperative that works in organic farming and agroforestry. In 2020, Paige was awarded the Goldman Environmental Prize, also known as the Green Nobel. And in her speech, she said, The award gives me the opportunity to tell the world that the territories of indigenous peoples are being dispossessed for the imposition of mega projects, extra activism, agribusiness, tourism, and others that strengthen a capitalist model that affects natural resources and our means of employment. And that the award, quote, represents a recognition of the work of the Mayan communities of the Shane, a region of Campeche, and of the unity of the Mayan territory. Right. And I think it's important that we do recognize that we don't get to celebrate many victories for those in the indigenous communities. In the U.S., we're talking about the fact that they're already pulling back a lot of autonomous rights uh, for tribal communities here. And for us to see and for us to celebrate such a great victory because of such damage that it could have caused an entire community, an entire species. It's amazing to see that they won against a corporation. It feels like the little guys finally get to win for the first time and that she's not only be able to celebrate that, but she's going to help model that for other people who are trying to fight that and hopefully like, uh, hopefully push for that because Mexico actually happens to be one of the highest production for honey. And it's important to know that this is their livelihood, that this is what has built their community. And she has talked about the fact that it's something that she's learned and has been a part of their culture for 3,000 years and how significant that is for a community to have one giant industrial business come in and just ruin it because they want to do something that could be really uh, unhealthy and unnecessary and just puts out so many people. So cheers to her and the community that they have worked so hard to win those fights. Yes, absolutely. And bees are amazing. (laughs) uh, I recommend looking into them more. Uh, And also everyone we cover on this segment is amazing. And if you have any suggestions for who we should cover next, you can email us. Our email is stephaniemomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at momstuffpodcast or on Instagram at stuff I never told you. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina. Who's the best. We love, sir. The very best. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can listen to the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.